Hello and welcome to That Guy's a Maniac, the podcast DS. We are a podcast about video games. My name is Richie, and with me as always is Farley, aka Kunzi11, who will say hello and will tell us where to find us on the internet. I tell us, tell you, tell us, you. Tell us. <laughs> Hi, tell. sports fans. It's Kunzi11, aka Farley here. You can find our writings at www.thatguys.co.uk. And on all the socials, some of the socials, at That Guy's a Maniac, all one word, all lowercase. And as Richie said, this is That Guy's a Maniac DS. Um, for this season, we're taking inspiration from the DS era of gaming, where a number of video games had a subtitle with a D and an S. For example, Tetris Daddy Shagger. <laughs> That's not true, is it? That's not true. <laughs> You've made a list of all of these kids, <laughs> DS. You cannot make a fake Argu- one. <laughs> arguably the best Tetris version of Tetris there is. Uh, and um, before the season started, we prepared a bunch of D words and a bunch of S words. So I've got a big bag of Ds. Richie, Richie, can you ruffle in here and pull out a D? I need to get my hand deep into that bag of Ds yeah. and, to ch- and choose the perfect D. Find a uh, D. Um, I'm going to find one. Oh, 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 this one is called Dice. Dice. Okay, I've got the bag of S's over here. <laughs> scruffling for the S's. And I've got... I've got what we... Um, score! <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Dice score. What okay. can we do with this combination of random words? Uh, maybe we could do a themed one around board games because board games have scores and dice. That sounds like a great idea, Richie. Before we start, <laughs> <laughs> on the topic of daddy shagging, can you explain to me, like, is Bowser Jr. Bowser's son? Uh, yeah. What about the Kooplings? What's their relation? They are also his. Uh, offspring are they yeah i don't think they were no no i remember some internet discourse um about they're not Bowser's children why not i mean well i suppose they're called koopa is bowser called bowser koopa oh i don't know maybe we shouldn't go down this path <clears throat> Of asking these questions when neither is actually. I'm on the, the Super Mario Wiki. Okay. Can you name all the Kooplings? Oh God, uh, Ludwig, uh, yes. Wendy, yes. Eggy, yes, um, Lemmy, yes. Um, Morton, yes, um, uh, I think that's where I have to stop. Oh, you did really well. You're missing Roy and Larry. Roy and Larry. I knew there was another L in there. Yeah, God Roy Orbison and I don't know who Larry's based on. Yeah. Um, just minions. It's just minions. Yeah. But they are siblings. Okay. But we don't know their no. offspring connection. Okay. Okay. No. Maybe their nephews and nieces. Oh, hang on. Originally. Just... So we depicted as Bowser's children. Yeah. And stated to be his offspring. There's like five references to his offspring. Okay. Older games continue to maintain them as his children in re released and updated manuals. However, Shigeru Miyamoto, ruiner of Nintendo lore, eventually affirmed that Nintendo's current story is the Kooplings and not Bowser's children in 2012. Wow. Do you reckon it was like a paternity test or something? Yeah, some deep scandal that Nintendo was covering up, and then in 2012 decided to. Uh... <laughs> Do you know what it'll be? It'll be like Bowser Jr.'s got um, Peach's DNA, whereas uh, the other ones have got Daisy's DNA. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> what? You don't think when he kidnaps her, they like get it on? No, I don't. Okay. He just wants her to make cake. Yeah. He wants to eat that cake. 
<laughs> so board games. We're talking about board games as video games, video games as board games. Yes, yes, that is the theme. So, games, board games, board game games. Board game games. So, I hear you've done a lot of prep and uh, have some ideas. Not so much prep. So much prep. Okay. So, what are my ideas? One of my grand ideas. Um, that I think we've mentioned a couple of times before on the blog and in the podcast is with rare exception video games based on board games are not very good rare exceptions yeah rare exceptions. but I, I think board game sorry video games based on board games or other way around video games based on board like monopoly the video game uh yeah yeah like not interested in that um no. With rare exceptions, as long as your like standards aren't ridiculously high, I've found um, the Trivial Pursuit series of games uh-huh. always quite engaging. Um, but especially they, in my mind, I think we played one together, and in my mind, I'm sure this is Trivial Pursuit. They added like a bunch of really annoying animations. We didn't really need them. Like the cheese wheel would bounce along and yep. just just move around quickly. Well, I mean, you have that option. You can turn those animations off and on. Uh, I, I just leave them on, but yeah. Um, so I played several iterations of Trivial Pursuit. All right. Um, I know. Um, there's <laughs> rather um, weirdly, I remember playing the C64 Commodore 64 version of Trivial Pursuit. Um, which I remember was terrible, mm-hmm. um, along with Pictionary, but we can talk about that one later. Um, but the C64, yeah, so it was basically there was a little man who would actually ask the questions and things like that, but it was all very, very much honors system. So it was kind of like, did you get it right? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, 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 I got it right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really that smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew how many square meters of tunneling there are for gas oil under the, the North Sea. Where did that come from? Um, Here's a real question from C64 Trail Pursuit. Okay, Who's go for it. Alleged bow and arrows are preserved at. Kirkley's Hall, Yorkshire. Okay, I've put in my answer. Uh, did you get it right? Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, what is the well, answer to that? I have no idea what the answer is. is. Robin Hood? But then, and then Robin Hood didn't exist? Robin thingy Loxley thing did, didn't he not? Just because you know his proper surname doesn't mean he exists. But he. Mm, okay, I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm basing my knowledge off of Kevin Costner, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not gonna have a bow and arrow. Will, Will Young? But what was the question again? I didn't pay attention. I was too busy gearing <clears throat> myself up for the joke. What? Who's bow? Whose alleged bow and arrows are preserved at Kirkley's Hall, Yorkshire? Kirkley's in Yorkshire. Yeah. Is Sherwood in Yorkshire? No, it's Nottingham. Is Nottingham in Yorkshire? Is Nottingham in Yorkshire? I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. Well, apparently Robin Hood's grave is in Yorkshire. Okay, then let's go with Robin Hood then. Okay, well, we've got no way to check. Oh, great. Did you get it right? Yes. Brilliant. Let's move on. (laughs) But yeah, um, so I remember playing that and it's really weird that I remember that whole uh, did you get it right? Uh, And again, that honour system carried to the Pictionary thing as well. Which is, uh, yeah, anyway. um, But I also played the 360 versions of Mm -hmm. uh, nope, versions of Trivial Pursuit. And the one I think we've played 
I think we've actually played both, but um, there is just a straight up Trivial Pursuit version, which is um, play on a board, um, and you you go through and you play as normal with Trivial Pursuit. It brings up the answers. Each person plays with a separate controller and presses their buttons and everything's mm -hmm. uh, quite cool. Um, and it's got the animations and things like that, and you've got a guy who's, you know, announcing everything and stuff like that. Um, you also have a quick version, which means that you sort of play versus each other and you're trying to get the colours as quickly as possible. And like, so once you get a wedge, like if you get a green wedge, all of the green squares disappear from the board and it shrinks down. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. I thought it was quite a cool, uh, <clears throat> way of shortening the game. Um, can, sorry? Can I park that thought? Did you get a legit copy of Trivial Pursuit on the C64? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Is it, that is a beautiful product. Have you seen it? Or do you remember it? I don't think I got a deluxe special box or anything like that. I think it was a Commodore 64 tape case. Yeah. You know, it's got like all the Trivial Pursuit branding. There's a nice, beautiful yellow book. Yeah, really nicely done. Oh, okay. I mean, there is a very good chance I, I, I did, but I, that doesn't ring a bell. Maybe you'll recognise them. you recognise the, the Trivial Pursuit blue or teal tapes? Yeah, no, I think it was definitely just... Yeah, no, no, no. I think it was just a... Uh... Oh, no, wait a minute. Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Commodore Genus Edition. That's nice. I no longer have that sure. anywhere. It's a nice product. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, then that was so cool. Yeah. Wow. I, I I like that you look into this sort of stuff. I completely forgotten that even existed. <laughs> but yeah, do you see the little man that asks questions? Yeah, yeah, there's a little man. And then there's, there's somebody... I'm surprised. There's like almost as many different versions as there are Mary Kate and Ashley games. <laughs> There's like Trivial Pursuit the next level or something, or well, I, I what I was about to say is on the 360 and also on the Switch, um, there is another uh Trivial Pursuit game, Trivial Pursuit A New Beginning on the C64. Oh, right, on the C64, we still yeah. back then, is that what you're talking yeah. about? Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I don't remember that much. Do you know, that would be quite good. Game to play with a group of us. What the uh, brilliant? Yeah, it'd be so much fun. Did you get it right? Yes. Which 20th <laughs> century British Prime Minister was one sixteenth Iroquois Indian? Apologies if those are not the uh, correct terms. I don't think those are correct terms anymore. Um, I've no idea. Me neither. I mean, Did you, also, you could also just ask name a 20th century British Prime Minister. Um, John Major. John Major. Uh, hero <laughs> this is the best. I love the fact that a lot of our podcasts this season have been really, really visual. Uh, <laughs> and spent a lot of time with us researching on the fly. The answer might be... Might be. Oh my god. Winston Churchill. There you go, there's another 20th century politician. No idea. No idea. No okay. Idea. Yeah. Did you get um, it right? Yes. Oh, good. Well done. <laughs> good job. Yep, fantastic. <laughs> Did you cheat when you played it? Uh, probably. I mean, I was uh, probably around 12, 13 when I played it. It's quite tough questions for 12, 13. Yeah, mode. it really is. And, uh, like, you're not going to say no after spending half an hour of trying to get the game to load up watching the 
the Commodore loading sequences and stuff yeah, exactly. like that. Yeah. It would be quite fun to play with like uh, without the internet. Well, to, I'll I'll dig out encyclopedias. I'll dig out the Commodore sixty four machine. Remember that oh, we yeah, had fiendish. It have it? Uh, well, it's, it works with every single Commodore sixty four ROM as good. well. Yeah, uh, which is where we played Shadow of the Beast and Fiendish mm -hmm. Freddy. Yeah, but that, that that's something for season three, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh god, don't mix the seasons up, man. Mix the seasons up. Anyway, you were going to say something before I... Uh... Yes, I was talking about another Trivial Pursuit game. Switch, yes. Which is also on the Switch and also on the 360. Uh, the Switch version just came out. It's called Trivial Pursuit Live. Wait, it's on the 360 and Switch? Uh, that I know of. It might be on other platforms. Ah, uh, okay. May be available on other platforms. Other platforms are available. Um, is, what is the current Xbox? I don't know them anymore, man. Series something? Xbox. Xbox One, Two. Series X. X. Xbox Series X. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I know there's a small version which doesn't have a uh, DVD drive. DVD drive. Did <laughs> they ever have a DVD drive? No, no, they didn't. <laughs> um, there's a wasp outside my window. <clears throat> I still secretly want the DVD yeah. to play off the GameCube. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. Because I think if you've got all the shit <clears throat> for the GameCube, because it all just stacked underneath, right? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if you could stack it all. It was like one at a time. I like to think you could just stack them all and you just have this huge tower of a game. <laughs> like a totem pole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could play GBA games and uh, DVDs. <laughs> Digital radio, modem maybe. A modem, of course, yeah. Play whatever one game that came out <laughs> that was modem-enabled. Probably fantasy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Even though it was on <laughs> Dreamcast. <clears throat> or did fantasy? I have no idea. Anyway, Trivial Pursuit. Original fantasy star was on the Mega Drive. Trivial Pursuit Live. Yes. Is it as good as 100 vs. 1? That's all the listeners, the readers want to know. No, nothing is good as 100 vs. 1. You can never, ever, ever, ever compare anything to 100 vs. 1. There are people who play games who weren't born when 100 vs. 1 came out. They won't know. They won't even know. No. Brilliant. Yeah. People won cars. Yeah. I remember when the Penny Arcade guys hosted it. It's great. What a game. Yeah. And, and why hasn't anyone done it again? I don't know. Such Readers, an easy format. Readers, if you've not talk about 100 vs. 1 before. Uh, it's like the game show 100 versus 1, but you were playing with people over the internet. And so, yeah, uh, yeah it, all, it played off what percentage of people got the answer correct. And uh, if you were in the minority, I think you got more points. And it was brilliant. It, was, it whittled yeah. down and whittled down, but it was the questions were asked quick enough that you probably couldn't Google them. Yeah. But nowadays, you could just probably get Siri right beside it. Um, you know, probably just train a machine to do it. Yeah, I think that's why we don't have a hundred versus one anymore. Shame. Yeah, because of these bastards that would cheat. Divisional, did you? Um... Did you get it right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did did Siri get it right? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about this Switch version, please. Okay. Drew Suit Live. TP Live. Yeah, TP Live uh, was a game show version of Trivial Pursuit, and I'm pretty sure we have played it. Do because, I th that? yeah, because I think that's where you named your character Butt Lester. Butt Lester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of my favourite alts. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, but basically you get to choose from about, I don't know, eight characters, one of them is <laughs> like a woman in a big hat, so of course yeah. we always choose the woman in a big hat, um, and it is, um, uh, it's 
about four or five rounds mm-hmm. um, of different ways of like answering questions, and you gain points um, for each sort of category. So mm-hmm. obviously you get like science and nature, entertainment, and you know that the usual trivial pursuit ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and then towards the end, you sort of like face off um, versus uh, one another, and then eventually one person goes into a grand slam to see how many points they can get. Uh, and yeah, it's just basically different format. It's called Trivial Pursuit because it has Trivial Pursuit questions and Trivial Pursuit themed um, categories. But yeah. But yeah, it's, it's it's good and I think we've had fun with it. Yeah, you're talking about it as an example of a good adaptation. Yeah. It reminds me, and it's not really a thing that happens anymore. Do you remember pub quiz machines? Yes. You spent hours on those. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they, they kept going until, like, I, I don't know, do you still get them? I feel like I you don't. I think don't. you do. I've not seen them for a while. I mean, I've not thought about them for a long time. I don't think you, see them. you just don't see them anymore. No. It's because they were usually, like, uh, also bundled in with a fruit machine simulator thing they were well. fruit, yeah they were fruit machine adjacent and yeah you had a selection of games one of which was pub quiz others were a bit i think it's like a who wants to be a millionaire type jobby yeah and it depending on how much money was in them it would depend on how difficult the questions were yeah and the payout but obviously i don't know it'd be fascinating to try and hunt down developer of those machines and ask them how yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) you did get questions coming up you know how often do they have to update the questions so that people wouldn't just drive around (laughs) an area and hoover up all the quiz machines yeah yeah but i mean they could have been connected to the internet at that point yeah yeah but um yeah no i used to quite enjoy that like going out with my mates and yeah like yeah, sort of mid two thousands, all standing around with their drinks in their hands and everybody shouting what the answer was. You know, like, yeah. Most commonly spoken language is Spanish. <laughs> Spanish, mate. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like you know good, the good first hour of a uh, session would be quiz machines. Yeah. The beach is not good at the pub anymore. I mean, there's also that. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't exist. I think it's because students don't go to the pub anymore. Oh, yeah, of course. They all teetotal snowflakes. Mm, go to the gym. Hell's a bit. Yeah. Fucking bastards. <laughs> <clears throat> Destroyed the quiz game culture. Yeah. Their actions. How dare they? How dare they? How dare they? Yeah. Uh, anyway, right. Um, so that was Trivial Pursuit I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. So that, I think that's a pretty solid addition to our Trivial Pursuit board game. Oh, sorry. Board games, video games, video games, board games. Board, board, yeah. video games, dice scores. Yes, exactly. And Trivial Pursuit has dice. So therefore mm. it... Oh. Oh. <laughs> the drag race. Yep. Um, Far version. Cool. <laughs> Not the uh, dressing up as ladies one. No, that'd be a very strange noise. Yes. Um, okay, so what do we have next in our bank of uh, video game, board game, board game, video games? What? Let's just talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? Yeah. Uh, which is... Mario... Party? Sure. Party. Okay. <laughs> What's your elephant? Uh, we'll go for it later. Never mind. No, go on. No, no. I, I was going to talk about Resident Evil, since we are Resident Evil. <clears throat> oh, that wasn't oh. right. Okay, yeah. Mm, yeah. But no, no, it's fine. Like, let's talk Mario Party. Um, is Mario Party a board game, Richie? Yes. Yes, it is. But it's the kind of board game... I mean, it already tears families apart. <laughs> it te- it tears apart the fabric of the definition of what a board game is. I knew there was well. like a real version of that. 
that at the end just fucked everything around and didn't really matter anymore. I think, uh, yeah. Yeah. It would destroy families. Much table flipping, ahoy. So what we're referring to is you can be winning a game of Mario Party. You can be you several can winning, stars. You winning the offer. entire game. Entire game. Yeah. Then, at the end, there is a sort of, here's some awards for some random things that the computer has decided, like, you were the most unlucky, or you were the most, um, you ate the most fish, or, or, or something stupid like that. Um, but the rewards are random, and then they'll go to people. And even if you have the most stars, at the end, anyone can win by this <laughs> random factor. There is no way to beat this. <laughs> there is just playing it till you get to the end and then getting fucked over by Bowser Chance. Jr. Or, or who is it? Shy Guy? or No, it's Koopa. Birdo? No. It's Koopa. <clears throat> Koopa? Koopa. <laughs> Koopa. Koopa. No, it's, it's not Koopa. Who hosts? It's Toad. Toad. What Toad, the little fuck. Yeah. What yeah. What a daddy shagger. What a daddy shagger. <laughs> I don't mind Toad. Ugh. Ah. I, <laughs> I do when he dicks us over with. Um, it's been a very, very sweary episode. I oh, know. Show enough. Show enough. Yeah. <clears throat> but listen, our friendship is um, strongly built around Mario Party. It is. Um, so initial uh, Mario Parties that came out uh, was it Mario Party Three that we played in a Virgin Mega Store. This like is how good... fucking <laughs> geological we are. <laughs> <laughs> in our in our breaks, we would go and play <laughs> Mario Party on the N sixty four in a Virgin Mega Store when <laughs> when all three of those things existed. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Party 3 was current. <laughs> you know? It's the new game. It's why they had a demo pod. Yeah. A <laughs> demo pod. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we really just went, not even in our break, we pretty mm. much skipped a lesson. Just days. <laughs> yeah, days yeah. Just spent that demo pod. We, yeah, we spent hours. Nobody cared. Like, no. the. Virgin Megastore was never like heaving. There was never like a queue of people yeah. who wanted to pay, play it. There's a reason why it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody was going there. But yeah, we went to the Virgin Megastore. Yeah. Stood because it had two controllers, yeah. and we and, and <clears throat> our friends were behind us watching yeah. us play. Mm, yeah. And we do like a full round, and a full round can last like forty-five minutes. Easy, yeah. easy. They've yeah. just come to um, Nintendo Switch Online. Have they? The old Mario Party. Mm, I think two, 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 three, and maybe another. Ah, oh, I think I'd like to play three. Yeah, as me well. too. The nostalgia feels. But yeah, I yeah, totally. Maybe we can like get in touch with a, a local HMV and say, "Can we just?" I know this is a strange request. We'll pay. Can we you just know... set up a Switch <laughs> in the corner There's on the TV? Some... You, you're laughing about that, but there's yeah. more and more of that shit actually happening. Um, so there's a new um, video games cafe uh, uh -huh. just beside St. Paul's, which yeah. is about like just setting these things up and having the pods to yourself or having all of the accessories and stuff like that and just having and being in this sort of LAN environment, but without, but, but casual, like casual LAN. Nice. It's really cool. I, I like that. that uh, do, you reckon yeah. we could take, do you reckon we could play Mario Party there? Yeah, definitely. Nice. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, my sofa also works. Yeah, I know, but it's not, it wouldn't be the same. No, it wouldn't. Without that slight fear that we'd be kicked out at any point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah, of course, when we get sweary and shouty. Mm hmm when the bad things happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, With the um, Mario Party randomness, I feel like 
they've been getting a little bit more balance. <laughs> I know that no one's talking about Mary Pie balance. No. But I feel like they're getting a little bit more balance. It's nah. a little bit less random. Nah. Nah, and nah, nah, nah. <laughs> and they've given you the tools to, to you know, fuck each other over by stealing stars. Yeah, but you, you could always do that kind of stuff. But it was, at the end, it's really, really bad because you, it is a selection of different awards that get given out. Yeah. You can't, you can't make it happen. Well, also it's based on dice rolls, right? So yeah. Sometimes it gives out the. Uh, you know, most squares travelled award, and there's nothing. There's nothing you can do about that. Nothing. And but it's the thing is that it's sometimes the heels give that one out, not consistently either. Yeah. You know that that's the that's the evil part about Mario Party. But Listen, again, yeah, it's the journey. It's the journey. It's true. It's the journey. But also, I think that ending is like a strong moral lesson in life yeah you did everything right you made the good dice rolls you yeah. bested everyone at the mini games but listen life doesn't life doesn't care yeah no life doesn't care life yeah thinks that this other person who did yeah. fuck all birdo yeah, yeah deserves <laughs> deserves all the credit yeah it's like yeah it's like the kardashians exactly like that and on that note, I think it's break time. We've reached the middle of the podcast. Welcome to the middle of the podcast, everybody. How's Welcome the first to the half going. Break time. Yeah, I think uh, we're halfway through. I think it's not too bad. I mean. For you winging it entirely, I think it's. Um... <laughs> we mentioned dice. And we did. I'm looking forward to the second half where we talk about scores. Um, <laughs> but as is that guy's maniac, the podcast DS tradition in the halfway house middle of the podcast, <laughs> we ask each other the ultimate video game trivia questions. I've got two questions for you, Richie. Okay, okay, okay. You go first. All right. In, and you'll know from the second word whether you will be able to answer this question or not. In Hellblade, <laughs> Senua's Sacrifice. I've never heard of this game before in my life. Have you? Uh, no. Yes, yes, I have. I know exactly what it is in the character. But I've, oh, never, really? pl- I've never played it. Okay. Well, you might be able to answer that. Senua embarks on her quest to save Dillion's soul from which goddess i've no idea no guess idea a goddess. Get a, guess uh, a goddess. persephone no was she a goddess uh was she not like an offspring of a goddess okay uh, aphrodite no it was hella hella of course yeah okay she a <laughs> goddess <laughs> okay Cool. All right. Okay. I got one for you, Farley. Right. And again, let's see if you know this one. In What Remains of Edith Finch? Ah, yeah. <laughs> which character is revealed to have drowned on his family boat crossing to America? Oh. You've played it. You spent the time. You've invested in this game. <laughs> I loved it. I thought that the question was going to be... The answer was going to be the baby who drowns in the bathtub, which is fucking rough to play through. Wow, okay. Spoilers, but... In case no, you were that... ever going to play it. Yeah. It's, it's it's one of the roughest things in video games. Um, Like, uh, yeah, it gets like all euphoric as the baby's drowning. It's gross. Um, George, or the dad, I don't know. <laughs> Rather ironically, it's quite related to your answer. Is it Dillian? No, it's Odin Finch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> well, um, there we go. Right, okay, you give me the second one, second one. You think I'll get... Is... Okay, strange? Life is strange? Protagonist Max Caulfield is a student 
of which subject at Blackwell Academy? Um, English. Uh, no, it's photography. No, oh, okay. Have you played Life is Strange? No. <laughs> it's quite good. I think you like it. Really? You like role-playing angsty teenage girls? That's true. Uh, maybe they don't, I'm they just don't too overqualified transform. for that game. <laughs> they don't transform into sexy consoles, though, so maybe it's not your thing. No. Not very good, eh? <laughs> what are the RPG mechanics? <laughs> Do they get any power-ups in Life is Strange? <clears throat> no, they don't get any power-ups. There's no... It's, it's not a game. It's not a game. There's no spark jumping at the end. Life is <laughs> Strange. <laughs> to answer questions and solve mysteries. Right. Okay. Last one. You ready? Okay. Are you Need prepped? One. Are you one point? We've got no points so far. <laughs> you could say we've got a bad score at the moment. Oh! <laughs> 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 okay. You ready? Yeah. After its original release in Japan. Shit. Resident Evil Two. By what name was the Sega Mark Three known worldwide? Sega Mark 3? Sega Mark 3. Ugh. Uh, I'm just going to go with my gut and say the Saturn. Oh, it's the Master System. What? <laughs> what was Sega Mark 1? I've no idea. What's Sega Mark 2? Maybe they were prototypes or they were versions that never made it to market. The Mark 3 is the only one that made it to market. Wow. Well. We've I mean, all learned something. Well, no, we haven't. We should learn. We should learn why is it called the Mark III, but never mind. Um, and and I, I, actually, in DS um, mm. style, you should mm. probably Google it right now. Um, <laughs> no, I want to remain ignorant on that. Okay, cool, fine. I just want to know that the Master System is the Mark III. Yep. Just keep it in your mind. Just keep it in my mind. Yep. Wow. Um, wow. <laughs> Zero points for the yeah. um, middle of the podcast. Yeah, not not great, really. No. Shall we? Uh, shall we head back in? Yeah, let's head back in. Um, we should probably continue on with Mario Party. I think feel like we we have more to say about that <clears> game, <throat> or do we? I don't think we do. No. No, we never touched in many games. No, there's many games. There's many games. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, that then. Se- that series took a dip, didn't it? One of them was really bad. Yeah, there was uh, one in the Wii U, which I, I was excited about and I got, and we we all hated it. Like, yeah. unanimously, you were like, yeah, I'm not playing this. Whereas, we play the one on the Switch and we're just like, when can we next play it? You know? Yeah, we've got so much to do. Yeah, it's so odd because it was like it was a day one purchase for me that the, the one on the Wii U is like one of the few ones that I was excited yeah. about. Well, this is yet another reason why um your Wii U memories are just scorched earth. Yeah, not just the fact that it broke, but also that Mario Party was the worst. Mario Party yeah, was it was before. the worst Mario Party. Anyway, yeah. Thankfully, the series is uh. Back to its good self once again. Yeah, and of course you can revisit the old ones. Um, so I want to talk about the other elephant in the room, given yes. that our roots are as a Resident Evil video games blog. Mm-hmm. The board game based on the video game mm. Resident Evil Two. Which we have been playing through and enjoying. Or, I I say that, have you been enjoying it? I have been enjoying it. It was a bit rough to start. So, uh, I think it was a Kickstarter thing, wasn't it? But you can now find it... Everywhere, um, yeah. Everywhere. Every reputable board game shop. Um, And it's a bit rough to start with, especially because we were playing it maybe once a year. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's 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 a high quality modern board game, uh, which has hundreds of little bits and lots of rules. Um, but you play through different scenarios. It's how do you describe those games? Your, it's 
cooperative and you're kind of playing uh you're playing a rule set so there is like a no one plays as the bad guy it all automatically happens through card generation and random yeah, events so there's a nice random factor so you have a you have a map that you make and put out you yep. have characters that can move along that map based on dice rolls and then you have the random factor as you move uh, around the map which are dictated by cards what, what's it called you have at the end of every phase it's a uh oh it's 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 not at the end of every phase it's it's a something phase or it's a something phase or it's a, it's the, the it's a tension, draw phase tension yeah tension phase. phase yeah yeah so you got draw phase tension phase um things like that yeah. and the creators are steam forged games there we go yeah like they, they make some beautiful minis um, yeah uh there's various expansions um characters have strengths and weaknesses and yeah each mission broadly following the the events of resident evil 2 yep uh well broadly but also broadly resident evil 2 disc 1 resident evil <laughs> disc oh uh, yeah yeah clear a scenario or leon yeah. b scenario which that's yeah. just really really cool it is yeah it yeah. um i think it's a it's a really good version of um where it treats the um what do you call it the source material with um a lot of love and respect and uh through just through the mechanic of this kind of deck of monsters as well as zombies and whatnot which are automatically in there it, you do end up with horrible scenarios that you know somebody's hanging back oh just go and check this sparkly thing that spawns two zombies and there's a zombie dog in the tension phase and then all of a sudden um you're yeah. overwhelmed yeah yeah. yeah 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 you're overwhelmed you're running out of bullets uh yeah so it does a really really good job at kind of reconstructing uh yeah some of the aspects of survival all right and we I... failed a couple yeah. of times yeah one time one time yeah um it wasn't really our fault um <laughs> um but yeah no um we did yeah like you can play that game and it is tough and it wasn't even like a tough tough level it's just there was a bad chain of events and somebody was sherry as well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which didn't help matters so yeah we've got the expansion or special edition which included sherry as a character there's a character who can't use any weapons um which yeah i mean that is what it is yeah <laughs> but you can uh, she, her upside is you can kind of move through uh enemies which other characters can't really do yeah and she can move faster as well could she not or, i can't yeah. remember anyway. yeah. yeah um but yeah like yeah, as you were saying like lots of expansions you've got the hunk expansion as well yeah and think, the hunk and tofu who are like the hidden secret characters from resident evil 2 again like so much love for that original game <laughs> um and detail in there as well and um yeah like it, it's great and there are there is the leon b scenario uh, other things to get li little map add-ons and yes, stuff like that you, as well you can, um, you can play it as a you can play it as an actual campaign where um you know in some of the early levels if you go out of your way you can pick up some ammo for a weapon that you don't have yet and then that carries over if you're playing this campaign that will kind of carry over to the next level um so yeah yeah no and that's yeah good fun um there's also the resident evil 3 board game which we haven't really talked about that's sort of like the we don't shh, don't talk about that not yet <laughs> <laughs> no, no, especially because there are only three scenarios. And <laughs> three scenarios and in three years. <laughs> um, I think it's also Steam Forge. Um, and in three years' time, you might get to. It. I also received the Horizon Zero Dawn board game. Yes, um, yeah, which is a similar uh, ilk. Beautiful miniatures. Um, and some intriguing you know, tile sets, which I think 
fairly accurately represent the game. Yeah, really excited at some point to crack that open and spend a frustrating few hours learning how to play it, and then yeah, time after that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, one thing that uh, you've gone and become is is the game master, the rule keeper um, of every single one of those sessions. Yeah, uh, I think if you're playing it frequently, it's much less hard to yeah to remember how the whole thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, they also do a Devil May Cry 5 one. Really? Based on the Battle Tower. <laughs> yeah, which I, I, I have you... no idea. Well, yeah. Yeah, how does that work? I mean, I, I, I'd love to think there's some sort of combo system involved. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but yeah, I have no idea. Um, I was just aware that it existed. Um, mm -hmm. Because I've signed up to it, everything they do. And I'm like, oh, Devil May Cry. But yeah. Um, do we? Do you want to say anything more about it? Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, Resident Evil. No, I don't. But I, I kind of like the idea of um, the first half of the podcast being board games which are video games, and the second half being uh, board games which are video games. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like that idea as well, except I still did have um, Pictionary for the C64. Go on then. Talk about Pictionary. Um, so How Pictionary... does Pictionary work on the C64? Very, very quickly. Uh, <laughs> it tells you something to draw. Yeah. And it tells the other team can't look. <laughs> so one person looks at the screen, gets a thing that they have to draw. Yeah. They draw it. And if the other that's, team gets it, such a backward way of playing yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then if the other team gets it, it asks you, "Did you get it? <laughs> did the team get it? Yes, they did. <laughs> yeah. What I a mean, way, what a way to make a game, which <laughs> its core you can play with a piece of paper and a pencil yeah. into into way more silly elements. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that's all we need to say about that. We can move okay. on. Yeah, move okay. back to... Was it officially licensed? Um, I'm going to say yes, since okay. Trivial Pursuit was as well. I have no idea. Did you get the answer correct? Yes. Okay, good. That was that. <laughs> I might take that forward as a philosophy in life, just asking people. <laughs> yeah, everything is on the honour system Yeah. for the rest of eternity. Yeah. Um... Everybody's on the honor system, although uh, it wouldn't work for politicians. Yeah, if you cheat, you just cheat yourself. Yeah, but yeah, like how does that make you feel? Just cheat yourself. You've let, just you've let everybody down. But like Boris Johnson, no, he's like, um, did you do these things? No. All right. Okay. Fine. Cool. Yeah. The thing is, he he wouldn't even know if he was lying or not. Yeah, that's true. Um, another, uh, I guess it's not based on a video game, but it is heavily inspired by a video game. There's another game we've been playing together, which is Boss Monster. Boss Monster, yes, with all the retro um, packaging and stuff like that. I the love that. Building card game. So it's a really fun... Is it fun? I think it's fun. It is think, fun. It is very I fun. I think people we play it with sometimes think it's fun. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, but it's yeah, really nice. It's based on cards, uh, and the packages and the expansions are like little Game Boy boxes. Yeah, well, the uh, the main game is like a NES cartridge, and the expansions yes. are like Game Boy pack. pack. Yeah, yeah, so so cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the aim is that you are a boss monster, and you have to build your build and kind of level up your dungeon. Uh, whilst heroes from the nearby village come and try and storm your dungeon um, yeah you kind of got various kind of traps and tricks which push the heroes back so they have to redo a room uh, I think it's like, there's like items you can get you can upgrade your your room so they do more damage uh, yeah to try and kill off as many heroes as possible but you can yeah. Against each other in four different dungeons. So each of you are making it is making a different dungeon. 
And um, yeah, of course the the heroes have different powers as well. Uh, they yes. can like avoid certain things, or they have more HP, or or things like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And no, yeah, no. it's solid, almost roguelike um, mechanics as well. Sort of like multiplicative. Like if you have two of these rooms, then it's got double the power of the next room. That sort of yeah. stuff. Really, really cool. Yeah, and the lovely, lovely thing I think about it, which really brings it all together, is um. Each of the cards, rooms, for your boss monster, and all your boss monsters kind of take inspiration from, uh, you know, there's a lot of like Metroid inspired boss monsters, uh, and yeah, kind of classics. It's like a Dracula type thing, a mummy type thing, a giant frog type thing. Yeah. Um, but it's the artwork, which is this like beautiful pixel art. And yeah, all it's these like. Tiny little details. It's pulled straight out of like a more of a 16 bit, but yeah, it's really it's glorious looking stuff, and mm. it's just fun. I mean, you get lots of like these um, retro pixel games um, on your like mobile and stuff like that, but yeah, like the fact that this is presented in this NES and Game Boy cartridge, and it just feels like you're playing uh, like a version of dungeon master you played dungeon master ever yeah it was one of the when we upgraded our from an amiga to a pc it came with swiv 3d <laughs> okay uh mdk and dungeon master dungeon master yeah and, and dungeon master was such a cool sort of reverse build your base but you're building your base to prevent like smitey paladin knights mm -hmm. coming through and you're using it creating goblins and skeletons and you know demons to sort of defend your base and create little torture rooms and stuff like that for them it's weird isn't it because in my mind that massively predates tower defense games but kind of was a tower defense game it wasn't that high pressure, was it? It wasn't high pressure as a tower defense game, but it it, it is. But it is, what well, it's a tower defense game in the same way as Warcraft was a tower defense game. Is Warcraft a tower defense game? Um, but it's a real time strategy game. Right? Yeah, I would say the Dungeon Master falls into the. Uh, what's it called? Um, the realm of RTS, but also, like, I mean, tower defense. I mean, all League of Legends is a tower defense game that's in a world of dead, uh, not World of Warcraft, uh, Warcraft or Starcraft map. You know, all of these uh, mobas are just tower defense games. Yeah. Am I wrong? No, 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 I don't think you are. No, it's the core mechanic, right? It's yeah. Taking out each other's areas and trying to defend them. Well, I can't remember. So I just remember having a lot of fun playing Dungeon Master. Um, because one of the things you could do was. <laughs> it's the same as Roller Coaster Tycoon as well. Because you could zoom into the world to see it from your minions. Viewpoint. Yeah. And that's what <laughs> I really loved about it. Yeah. So you kind of make a dungeon and then. Like yeah, and that stuff that was revolutionary at that time. But Dungeon Master is still a very, very playable game. Is it uh, Dungeon Master? There's an old, really old Dungeon Master. It was Dungeon Master and Dungeon Master 2. Dungeon Master 2 was a sequel that did a sequel well. Because Dungeon Master's like you're navigating through this, like a, a maze exploration game, right? No. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I... Uh, you're making me check. Dungeon... That's fine. Uh, oh, my God. Dungeon Master... What is it I'm thinking of, then? <laughs> I know. I, we're talking about the same game. Yeah, with with the red Keeper. demon. Keeper, Dungeon Keeper. Dungeon Keeper. Sorry. Yes. There you go. Yeah, Dungeon there you go. Keeper. There you go. Oh, God. Oh. 
I know, I know. Some people are just screaming at the podcast. <laughs> Probably us in the future. <laughs> what are you talking about? Time to keep up. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> oh, you and your stupid. Oh, I hate your fucking voice, Richie. Just do one piece of research, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no wonder this is the only lesson you're getting on this. <laughs> I'm not listening to the first three seasons. They're all like this. Jesus. <laughs> right. Yes. Dungeon Keeper. Like, Dungeon yeah. Keeper. Great game. <laughs> really was a great game. <laughs> what was the name of the card game? <laughs> Boss Monster. Boss Monster. Boss Keeper. Dungeon Monster. Dungeon boss. <laughs> Shadow Dungeons. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, no, I really enjoyed that one as well. Um, are there any other video game inspired board games that you can think of? I don't know which was first with Atomic Kittens because I know there is a video game version of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Surely it was a. In, in my mind, which is my saying, my phrase this episode. In my mind. In my mind. That was a Kickstarter. No. Shall we make it the fifth Google, or do yeah. we not care enough? I mean, come on. I've, I've forgotten what it's called. I was, I'm typing Atomic Kitten. And <laughs> <laughs> You'll be out, well, earlier when you were talking about True Pursuit on the Switch, I Googled Switch. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, AliExpress light switches for the best. <laughs> scrolling through all these light switches yeah. unable to kind of work out what you're talking I don't know what he's talking about it's true so it's just light switches isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Tom again man no <laughs> Tom again yeah no I'm going to say it was, it was a card game first um, but it's also available as a collectible card game gaming thing on your mobile but I, I only I've played the um oh I got you the zombie one. Um but yes, the one I have is, is the NSFW one where you've got like the dildo wizard and stuff oh, like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um and other cat or pussy related jokes. Yeah. Joked? Joked. Joked scissors. Um I can't think of many other um, adaptations. I mean, obviously, there's probably plenty under the Steamforged uh, umbrella because yes. they, they seem to have that niche. Oh, we've played Monopoly, but in Pokemon World. <laughs> yeah, we played Pokemon themed Monopoly. There's also Fortnite themed Monopoly. I'm sure there's. Uh, there's everything themed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. there is probably like a Leeds themed Monopoly. There is. Yeah, 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 there is. With yeah. the, the different parts and stuff. And the other one I was going to talk about is, um, although, you know, our card games, board games. Mm. No, I mean. We just talked about two. Those CCGs, and in, in fact, I would say even like Resident Evil is kind of a card game as well. Yes. Um, Deck based. Yeah. I would say they're fine. I would say if you're talking about card games as in 52 cards hearts clubs diamonds spades i would say no like they, okay. they are they are not board <clears throat> games they are card games well uh as you may or may not know um you can actually play a game with pokemon cards <laughs> oh of course like the the tcg is that not did it not get like taken down or something like that or revamped or <coughs> um, refreshed yeah so the online uh, there was a there was an online version of the game um, and there's basically like three big CCGs uh, there's magic there's hearthstone I guess and of course the yeah. card game I'm sure Yu-Gi-Oh I'm not too sure if Yu-Gi-Oh has Yo uh, Yu-Gi-Oh does have a card game but it also because uh, it also has game and a video games. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, the video games that I played 
were they, they were great. Oh, like, really? I yeah, like there was they first came out on the PC and it was like Yu-Gi-Oh and then you got the expansion Kaiba's Revenge um, and they were online playable back when games weren't very good at being online playable and I played this is like another one of your Richie's secret this is, we make this a regular segment Richie <laughs> secretly played <laughs> <laughs> but um, I played with uh, Randy McSporin yeah like played versus um uh, online because he had it as well and it, it was a great um great card game um yeah. and the thing was it was limited as well uh -huh. so it's kind of like if you could go back to the days of only playing the base original pokemon cards yeah like, like the gb like the Game GBA, yeah, yeah. yeah, or just that limited scope, but even with all of the fla f flashy, fancy graphics of other things, yeah. it, it it becomes a little bit more fun, yeah. and, and it's the same reason I don't play Hearthstone anymore because it's just oversaturated, and yes. they've had culls and they've had nerfs and they've had reinstated and they've got all this other stuff. Um, because, but when it first came out, I played it and enjoyed it. All of the expansions killed it, but yeah. the thing is with these games, I think they only ever made three, um, and you can go back. I think you can play them on uh, good old games, uh -huh. and still solid, fun Yu-Gi-Oh card games. Only thing I know about Yu-Gi-Oh, other than there is a main character called Yugi, yeah, and that's it. Right, but um, great games. That's right, yeah, I'm supposed to play. So with them, um, yeah, with the TCG, there was the Game Boy game, and there was the second Game Boy game that we didn't get a release of um, outside of Japan. Those were great. Um, I downloaded the one, the Pokemon card game. But the 3DS, honey, yeah, yeah, it's just great to jump in, you know, like you said, with the, with the limited, just that first, first two sets, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, and an element of you know you keep beating characters, get booster packs, to try and collect them, and then there's that like, like some you can only get through trades. Um, really, really good, really enjoyable. I hope it comes to Nintendo Switch Online, and I'll probably play through it again when it does. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure they don't have licensing issues with themselves. Who knows? Um, then for a long time, there's a game called PCTGO, and so one of the good things about the Pokemon card game is with every booster since I think the black and white era, you would get a code card and the code card kind of unlocks an online um, booster pack. Um, but that client was so old and it, they just replaced it I think, last year. Well, they said they were going to replace it. Then it took ages for them to do it. And then uh... recently they, um, it was quite controversial because there was like a time window where you could transfer your collection across to the new version, which is Pokemon TCG Live. Um, which didn't work uh, really bad launch um, but then what they don't and so you can only migrate one way um, and uh, in some ways it's quite good because if you had more than in Pokemon TCGO you could have like 50 versions of some crappy EV card right that's a common that you open loads of booster yeah. packs for um, and you keep four because you can only have four in a deck and then it would convert the other 46 would give you a currency to buy cards so um well <sighs> this was good because before that you couldn't really acquire the cards you needed so in real life if you wanted a competitive deck you could spend hundreds of pounds or trade but realistically you spend hundreds of pounds to get the cards you wanted in tcgo you just had to just keep buying booster packs real booster packs and putting the codes in there was no way to give that game money um, or trade with other players, but that's super sketch. Super, super yeah. sketch. Yeah. And there was just no way, you know, if you wanted to build a competitive deck, there was just no way you could easily do it without spending hours. This one is much easier to build the deck you want, um, so they borrowed some ideas from Magic Arena. Uh, but you, at the moment, you can't play extended. You can only play with, like, what's currently in the standard format which is the last four sets or something Ugh, so okay yeah 
all of my cards going back to X and Y. I think there was some that just didn't even migrate over, like back and white. I'm just kind of sitting there. Really it sounds moment. really accessible to new players as well. <laughs> I think if you're new, it's fine. Um, yeah, it's worth giving it a go. It's on desktop and mobile. I think mobile works better than desktop, weirdly. Really. Yeah. Uh, and when you log in and first start, they give you um, four great decks, like really, really great current meta decks. Okay. Um, so you can just have a really good time playing with those. Uh, uh, you know, doing your dailies, earning things, earning really generous at giving you cards. Um, so yeah, generally speaking, it's a really good. Uh, it's been a really good overhaul. Um, the down, the whole downside to it is games take too long. It's like twenty-five minutes. Yeah, that's not cool. No, which and if you're playing it on mobile, that's also not great. But it's a, a significant advantage over uh, um, better products than. Um, TCGO, which is getting really good data. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's really good that they kind of give you those really, really good decks because, as you mentioned earlier with Yu Gi Oh!, there's just this insane power creep. All out every five sets, there'll well, be here's no, no. a new mechanic, which means all of your good cards, or, you know, here's a, yeah, all of your good cards are no longer relevant, or yeah. the, the good cards which made your Pokemon V Max combos are generally being phased out because we're replacing them with like one X or the double Pokemon cards. Yeah. But you can't really get very far with Yeah. I've got, my, I've got my Squirtle and I'm gonna evolve it into a water. Like nobody nobody plays that. <laughs> yeah no. That that was the it was Hearthstone I was more meaning with that. With Yu-Gi-Oh I all I know. Oh, sorry, yeah, Hearthstone yeah, yeah, yeah. You were just given like these forty cards that you have to collect and you do the thing. But um with Hearthstone, yeah, I, I think it's just it was just really sad because like you would spend a season, which would probably be like six months, yeah, collecting the cards because you gain dust from doing and playing and yep, things like yep, that. Yep, too. Yep. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you've got your deck that you really love. New yep. season comes along, yep. new cards come on, yep. but also just makes the old cards irrelevant. Like there's or, no. Did it phase them out or? or... Well, eventually they they did have a cull, so they have this uh, another meta rotating season. Yeah. Which ultimately says that some cards are allowed and some cards aren't. Yeah. But honestly, the best fun that I had in uh, Hearthstone was just like the first couple of expansions where it was just kind of like. It's straightforward. You know the name of every one of them. You know yeah. what each card's going to be. And then it just got bloatier and bloatier and bloatier, and you're just like there's other mechanics introduced, and old cards got updated with these new mechanics, and you're just like, oh, I, I want to play the game that <laughs> I enjoyed playing. It's, yeah. the, same, it's the same as uh, the same as Magic Arena, which. It is kind of a board game. And there's, there was also there was, there was a really good old Magic PC game, um, Magic the Gathering, is it? Where the you had an overworld that looked like Diablo. Yeah. And you walked around and then you'd encounter other people. That was brilliant. Um, so me and me and a friend played that quite a bit. That was really really good. And I think that's what I want. I'd really like a like a one uh, a single player. CCG and I would play it forever. The problem with playing things online is one, you've got this kind of like evolving meta, um, so I really enjoyed yeah. Magic. Um, but then once you get to a certain rank, if you're playing online ranked, which you kind of want to, there's more rewards. You sit there sometimes and you're like, oh, it's one of these decks, and then you watch somebody, you know, basically pull off their combo on turn one. Yeah, uh, and you've done nothing. You can't really do anything. And if you aren't playing at the time, you can't really see the setup. So you don't know which cards to destroy in turn one and turn two. Yeah. And then the really boring thing just plays out. Like, well, this isn't. This no, isn't. I, I, and yeah, like <laughs> the, there, you get things like that. Like when the, I think that's why they had to introduce the new cards and and specifically in like Hearthstone and stuff like that because the meta 
was definitely a very very clear yeah. meta you got the warlock zoo deck which basically had lots of one point minions yeah or it's either you... it's either you lose to that deck or you win with the counter with the counter exactly and that's it but there was other ones that are like were dual counters and, and it, 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 you know and it I enjoyed, and I think I've told you this before, and I even did YouTube videos, um, or a point where they'd introduced this um, sort of summoning mechanic. Mm -hmm. So whenever an enemy died, you could summon um, a random enemy. Mm -hmm. And that was the fun part, it was random. Um, so you could get a random enemy of the same value, or a random enemy of a slightly lower value or a random legendary mm -hmm. you know um and you could do so much around that because there was like if a death rattle occurs make that thing happen twice so mm -hmm. you could end up with two of those uh, and, I, and i just i had a lot of fun playing with that mechanic and it just got made redundant almost immediately the point where i was starting to get happy with it you know <laughs> it's like oh right here's a new expansion Here's a new thing which completely is better than this. Everybody play these, get these cards. Oh, yeah. Fine. Yeah. I think during the during the pandemic, <laughs> where I was playing it every day, I did manage to kind of you know come up with a deck that I was kind of happy with that you know, I hadn't taken from the internet. And then I think the next set came along, and either a card rotated out, like a key, you know, the key card rotated out, and it was just okay. This deck doesn't work anymore <laughs> or a mechanic rotation yeah out. um yeah um but yeah i'd love i i really would love this single player version of these so every now and then i'll log into uh, magic arena and just kind of play the tutorial just to, just to play some cards and not have the pressure of being destroyed by i think <laughs> if, if you can find Yu-Gi-Oh, power of chaos <laughs> I guess. or i could just play the uh the Game Boy TCG game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy. But, but Yu-Gi-Oh! Power of Chaos, that's what it was called. And yeah. there was uh, the original version, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Destiny, and then the second one was Kaiba's Revenge, and then Joey the Passion or something like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it fucking is Joey the Passion. <laughs> it really know, is. That was, that was so specific that it couldn't have been made up. <laughs> um, but yeah, like... Um, power of chaos joy the passion um but you play like as these characters and you play the Yu-Gi-Oh cards with a set uh, deck and things like that again i don't know if Yu-Gi-Oh actually has like a card game really attached to it or anything like that but i remember having a hell of a lot of fun too yeah. much fun um for that game yes yeah well I think I think I told you this. I downloaded Final Fantasy VIII on the Virtual Console when I was on a big Final Fantasy kick. Yeah. Uh, and exactly the same thing has happened to me with Triple Triad that happened back in the day. I looked up a list of where to get the good cards. Yeah. Went and then to you find find a guy who had one. Mm. Lost. Then he took my Shiva, and I was like, "Fuck, he's taking my Shiva. It's all right. I can win it back." Played him again. Lost again. He took my Everett, and yeah. And now I've just got to. Keep yeah. This guy to get my good cards back. Yep. And that's that has blocked my progress on Final Fantasy VIII. I love that game. I want to see. <laughs> I want to see the cutscene where the garden takes off and we all remember our memories and. But no. Yeah. No. Stuck with some yeah, bully stuck. kid in the canteen. Yeah. <laughs> Taking my good cards. And the worst part is you can get your Shiva and your effort back. Yeah. But you'll just take them again. He'll yeah. take them again. Yeah. Well, you, have to, my, yeah. you have to play them play them with a shit deck. No, because then you won't win with a shit deck. And then and then you get to the point where you don't have enough cards to even play. Yeah. And then you're fucked. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, I I don't think I have the patience and energy. The the zeitgeist for triple triad has gone. I don't think so, man. Yeah, it's gone. I think there is a there's a triple triad in uh, Final Fantasy. There's a triple triad mobile game. Oh, no. 
<laughs> if only that triple triad mobile game meant that you had to go out and randomly find people and do exactly what you do in Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have, to, you have to just keep challenging them and they yeah. take their good cards. Yeah, yeah, you know, I need it back. Yeah. <laughs> As if that's ever going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Give me back my favorite. <laughs> Great. Well, that's been uh, that guy's a maniac. DS dice score. Dice score. Um. What score would you give our dice out of six? Um, I would give it. Hard one. Hard. Give it a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> <Weird>. <laughs> That's a nice way to end the <laughs> podcast. I give it a hard. <laughs> give it a hard one. It's a happy ending to this. Just like, <laughs> is a maniac. Why did you fight me? <laughs> <laughs>